That is some powerful clapping. Ow. Ow. I've had years of clapping practice. Ow. I think my <laughs> eardrums have ruptured and are spurting eardrum goo. Butter. Scotch. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 58 of Coffee with Butterscotch, the game dev comedy podcast of Butterscotch Shenanigans. I'm Seth, and I'm the games programmer. I'm Adam, and I'm the Weber. Weber Grill. I'm a Weber Grill. <laughs> I'm Carolyn. I'm a people person. I'm Sam and I make art and stuff. And today is August 2th, 2016. <laughs> August 2th. Warning. Warning. Anything, anything can happen on this show. There's going to be there's going to be cursing. Also, we're recording much earlier in the morning than normal, so there's going to be extra cursing. We're on, <laughs> we're on the morning drunk high yeah. sleepiness. So if you don't like situation. if you don't like those kinds of languages and get GTFO. Get out. All right. Out. Now that we've provided the opportunity, let's let the let's let it flow. Uh what, so what happened? <laughs> what happened this weekend or this week? This week. What or what's ha- what is Bro, happening? What's happening? This week? Uh, we're launching on Gog. Oh my god. What is Gog? Gog? What is Gog? Gog, good old games. Mm. Which apparently simply means that they are DRM free. That's what makes, which makes them sense good. Because they're the old. old ones did used to not be. No, but I think DRM. I think they originally were their, their plan was to be like a warehouse of retro, like retro games. games. Yeah, um, that was. The but it turned plan. out none of them had DRM, and then everybody was like, "Oh, this is where you go for DRM free well, games." I mean, Crashlands is like what, seven months old, so it is pretty pretty much retro. It's, it's, it's retro. retro. Yeah. It's pretty old. That's a good point. What's yeah. you know, dogs have an age sort of thing that we a metric we use, like a seven Every, to one. Yeah, seven to one. What's the age range for games? Like probably 30, 30 to, to one. one. Mm-hmm. Thousand, yeah. I think it's probably thirty-one. Yeah, I'm a still going a thousand. A game that a game that's one year old is you know starting to get into that. Middle age, middle age point, replacing Actually, hips yeah. and yeah, about thirty. I guess, I guess I'm replacing. <laughs> yeah. I'm replacing Depends on how <laughs> I'm a middle aged. There, game. Are, there are people who get hip replacements at early, early ages. I mean, you don't take good care of their bodies. You're doing input replacements. So. I am. Yeah. I'm. I'm refactoring all kinds of stuff. I'm just trying to keep it alive. You know, <laughs> that hobble along a little longer. Live, live, have you. <laughs> And it is true that in the process you might accidentally kill it. So oh. yeah, and it's getting more and more frail as the years, yeah. well, the, the minutes go by. But it may start like years. It may by. start shattering mid-century colloquialisms. Scallywags. We can only hope. Uh, and also, we launched a new website. Website yeah. is up. Is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's got flippy floppies and clicky clackies. Yes, yeah. flip flops. Wait. Yeah, yeah, they're hidden. They're hidden. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're at the bottom. There's a lot of Easter eggs. They're, they're under the footer. Well, let's talk about the footer though, because we had a cool yeah. thing going on on the footer. What happened in the footer? Well, so we originally <laughs> came up with the idea that we wanted to do some sort of Easter egg, and we didn't have tons of time to go deep into the Easter egg realm. But keep I mean, your it, eyes take, it takes a lot of time to dye them, and you got to yeah. get the yolks out. And well, and if you don't, pain. yeah, if you don't you get boil a them for the right amount of time, yolks out. yeah, yeah, yeah. travel. So. I mean, travel into the Easter egg realm is just. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous. It is. Uh, there's the March hares yeah. and Cheshire cats. Yeah. So yeah. I guess. So I guess what we. So we only were able to get like how many of them? So there's fifty. What? How many of Easter, Easter eggs? eggs? Yeah. There's yeah. fifty five of these little trading cards. Okay. I collected fifty five before. Uh, that was a bloody. Well, we were, yeah. We we had to kill a large number of rabbits. I mean, murdering I, so many rabbits. I think Carol's blocked it out because you know it was, <laughs> it was very traumatic for all of us. Carol uh, had to take a, a leave, a mental health leave this weekend <laughs> yeah. just to get over the the, east, the Easter the egg drama. slaughter of 2016. Yeah. So we're not. Well, you know, we don't. I don't want to talk about it we, anymore. We, yeah. <laughs> we want to get more much, Easter eggs. I'm having flashbacks. Yeah, I love a question actually. What? Because the thing that we're talking about, which we haven't even. I don't think you've been explained yet. You just said there's Easter eggs in the footer. I there's think Easter that's enough. Of okay, we could, we'll leave it there, but I do have a question, though, which is all these Easter eggs, because an Easter egg can be kind of a thing you stumble across and find. It's kind of the classic one, right? Uh, when we're saying we have 54 e- Easter eggs, they're, they're all in the same spot. So Correct. is that one Easter egg with 55 variants? Mm. Oh, my God. I don't even know what an Easter egg is. I don't either. Anyway, that was All right, no, I, think, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a thing that you find, and you're like excited about it because it's colorful and like egg like. Maybe has chocolate inside. Egg-like. Maybe has rotten yolk inside. You oh, don't I know. It's exciting. Yolk. You don't know until you put the whole thing. So you in your pop mouth. it in your mouth and crunch <laughs> and down. Yeah. Then you know. Then you, you really you know. Easter eggs. 
That's how I eat a string. <laughs> you can also find out if they're that hard plastic shell or a real egg. Or you know. Kinder, what are the Kinder eggs? Oh, that had the things in them. Yeah. Oh, that let are me ask you guys this. Yeah. All right. So Cadbury mini eggs, as we all know, are the, the greatest food in the universe. The greatest, there's the other best food? food in the world. Yeah. Um, there's <laughs> other food at other times of the year because Cadbury mini eggs stop existing, and then humanity has to subsist on garbage for the next. That probably months. explains the shitty state of the world. Yeah. Right. Is now. that there's not enough Cadbury mini eggs yeah. Yeah. around? Oh. Um, but you know, you know how there's those Cadbury cream eggs that yeah. are full yeah. of that whole. Horrifying goo. <laughs> yeah. What's horrifying about it's, it? It's the sweetest <laughs> substance that exists. It's so good. I, know, like, it, I like, like it, but even for me, I, I eat one of those things and I'm like, my teeth are going to fall right yeah, out. I think, well, yeah. there's, you know? all this demonstrates there's a, there's a yin and yang to every single food item that exists. And the Cadbury filled eggs is are both. The, oh, well, yeah, they're disgusting. <laughs> 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 disgusting. <laughs> they got too much yin. Every time I bite one and I see the goo like blah, like slurping out of there, I'm like, is this lotion? What the <laughs> fuck <laughs> is this? Like, who put lotion inside it's my highly viscous? Yeah. I do do not want. It's so good, and then there's like the little squirt of yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. like, what is that about? No, it's the yolk. It's the yolk. It's the yolk. Oh yeah, <laughs> just oh. uh. So, <laughs> so well, we, we also got we have also got a, a new lore story coming out. Yeah, yeah. today. So oh wait, guess, we should probably finish the Gog announcement today. thing. Oh yeah, it's coming we, out. Oh, yeah. it's coming Rewind. out. <laughs> we'll be out on Gog today on the podcast August third for yeah. podcast time. We do record one day in advance, so it's real. It's yeah. confusing. So yeah. you get it all DRM free, or you can now. just uh, we'll be on their uh, podcast. One of us will be. And on uh, popping into their Twitch stream sometime as well. So yeah, so Gog is a cool company. They they like they suppose they are really good to their people. Um, we'll find out. So far, they seem very friendly yeah. to devs. So, uh, so if you're not into Gog or don't know about it, you should definitely scoop it out, mm -hmm. listeners. Not the three. Scoop of you it out and then at. scoop <laughs> up a copy of Crashlands while you're there because it's gonna yeah. be there. So. Scoop, scoop it with your cash dollars. Yeah, with the cash. You shovel. just kind of form your your dollar into like a, a frito <laughs> a like scoop. scoop. Yes, and just get yourself a good. Fat helping of crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, so uh, yeah, you were saying something about lore, lore stories. Yeah. Well, something. So, yeah. I uh, was. And yeah, uh, it's a thing that's happening. We worked up the, the sort of back history lore stuff for the next title, which essentially takes place that big chunk of lore takes place between the end of Crashlands and the beginning of the next game. Codename Brunch. Code and Brunch. we've, uh, we decided to kind of put out little, similar to the Brahma, the Seed Soul stories, we'll be putting out little uh, lore pieces that are sliced up into thirds or something like that, uh, essentially every week for the next foreseeable future. Every week, huh? Every single week. You're, you're, I'm saying you're it. You're committing? You're making a public? Mainly because I already have this one um, basically completely done. Ooh, I, the key is just to break it up into enough pieces. That's, yeah. Right. So you'd be like, every week it's a sentence. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> crap, I only, <laughs> and then yeah, I wrote a paragraph. I'll just break it up into three pieces. <laughs> and he did say for the foreseeable future, and we That's actually true. cannot foresee, foresee the future. It. We don't know so what's going to happen. Much of a Thank you. So, so many outs for any this. period of time yeah. <laughs> so that don't he may so choose. Don't depend on this. At Carol all, is our spokesperson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the goal is to, to get uh, were made. get a sort of Not picture painted us. in the background of of what's going on in the in the world to lead up to the events of the next game because we have plenty of time before that's actually going to hit. So mm -hmm. it'd be fun to kind of have a uh, long chain of events leading up to it and a long piece of understanding where you'll see the different races interacting with whatever's happening, which I won't give away, um, and how Bad they're dealing with though. it. Bad maybe, stuff. Maybe. Always bad stuff, I mean. And probably some Depends on what side you're on. That's true. Yeah. Actually, they... On either side, there's bad stuff happening. Which is that's I true. Guess that's also. Just, you know, it also depends on your perspective. Wars, yeah. Bad if you're if you're it. top down and don't give a shit, <laughs> omnipotent, <then>, warlike, <laughs> nothing bad is happening. <laughs> but I'm really excited about this one because I actually re I'd written this the beginning of this story. Uh, I don't know months ago, around the same time of writing the Brahma story, um, but hadn't come back to revisit it. And then once we decided we're going to start up these Lore Tuesday events, uh, came back and Can then we call them Lose Day. Yeah, we're sorry, our lose day events, and with all the uh, history I developed for 
Codename Brunch in the last couple of weeks. It put a whole new sort of angle and spin on it. And so I've been rewriting it, which is really fun. So I hope hope everybody enjoys it. It'll be out today. And with a fancy new website, things will no longer get buried immediately. Yes. Oh, also, that new website is at www.bscotch.net. Yeah, we're going straight Bscotch now. We cut down the amount of typing required by some amount of percentage points. Big ones. We didn't measure it, but it's a sh- just a shitload like of percent. It's high. like more than 5,000. Yeah. Percent. Easily. Reduction. It's yeah. before you even start typing it, you've already typed it yeah. six years ago. Oh That's how much shorter it is. Oh, we're so good at development. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and before we get to questions, I also want to tell you guys a little bit about this new game that I came across. Oh, yeah? Came across? Uh, yeah. So I last night, I went with my wife's uh, work humans to a <laughs> game called soccer. So- oh, soccer. Soccer. So- yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a mean. Soccer? Yeah. So it's a dog it's, game? Uh, no, actually, it's sort of like a it's like a kind of a bad clone of Rocket League oh. with some survival elements. So, for example, I saw um, one of the players kind of banged into another player and he lost a whole bunch of HP. Mm-hmm. And then uh, then he was just out of the game and they didn't there was no mechanism for him to replenish his HP, like no Whoa. potions. Whoa. So what? it's really hardcore. It's kind of like, intense. yeah, it's like don't starve in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. So no respawn. <laughs> right. Was it a top down um, view? It's like a. Um, there's actually multiple camera angles. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the where we were, uh, or sort of like in our connection to it, mm-hmm. there was just a shitload of people standing in front of us for some reason, um, <laughs> and we had to stand. And we were in this weird kind of prisoner's dilemma thing where everybody had to stand because the people in the front wouldn't, the people in the very front row wouldn't sit down. Yeah. So that the people behind them had to stand, and the people behind them had to stand. So there's like mm. there's mini games. Yeah, there's there's mini games. Game. Yeah, and so there were a few times where we would get to sit, but then something maybe interesting would happen there would stand again and then they would forget to sit down and then Mm. um, it was just a cascading sit stand problem Um, but there was also this really interesting mechanic uh, in the game which is anytime two players would get near each other Mm -hmm. one of them would flop onto the ground um, a sort of like a gambling maneuver hmm. because then the then the referee would come over and there's a 50 50 chance that the other team then has to kick the ball or, or then then there's like a penalty kind of a thing right hmm. so if you just fall on the ground and hold your knee then they they blame the other person well there's a 50 50 it's like a dice roll right it's a 50 50 huh. chance Is there any that penalty one team gets blamed for crying wolf though i mean if if you fall on the ground and then they're like no nah, nothing happened no no there's no penalty that doesn't seem balanced yeah it's yeah. a very it's it's, it's actually problem. it's not not yeah. a very well designed um, game, Mechanic, yeah. yeah. But so I'm hoping maybe the devs put out some good some patches or something. So what do you think? Plus Play the good. field is way too big. Um, yeah, yeah. I, apparently it's like 11 basketball courts can fit inside of a soccer field, what? which is just you know. Who needs that many? It's just too much room got time for that. We gotta yeah. speed it up, you know. Short yeah. Do they have track. interesting terrain within that big space? Or Are there spikes? No, there's no dunes? spikes. It's just flat. I mean, when boots? I think they were trying to just save on polygons because yeah. uh, they had to put a lot of a lot of you know memory into rendering the players. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you just have like a flat plane on the so field, it's just it's grass. Easier. It's just some textured grass. Just yeah, Weird. yeah. I mean, from where we were, it just looked like one uni- universal color. So mm-hmm. it may have just been a low, huh. like a just a you know, lousy untextured. Lambert or something. They just put a shader on it, probably. So. Cheap yeah. shader. Yeah. Wow. So, so how many waiter. how many stars? Uh, I mean, honestly, way? I just I'd give it like one what one star because it was a ninety minute game and only three goals were scored. But how much did you pay for it? Was it oh was I didn't it worth the price of it? <laughs> <laughs> so definitely one out of yeah. five so stars. Yeah, it's, it's freemium for so me. So it's a free yeah freemium. freemium. Yeah, I did buy a, a pretzel dog. IAP. They got you with the IAP. They did. I was I was a captive audience and I was like, well, I didn't pay anything. I should probably at least throw a little bit. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I got a pretzel dog and it was delicious. Were there ads too, yeah. or was it just oh, there's ads everywhere. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Cash grab. Yeah, yeah. Were there rockets at all? No, nobody flew. Oh, um, no rockets. Garbage. There was no, nobody exploded. There was no, the ball didn't mm. explode. What? Um, nobody was on the ceiling, which was a real bummer. You talk about these survival mechanics. Yeah. Um, is that, are we talking like the normal ones, you know, where there's like a day night cycle? Well, it's kind of like, it's a, it's food. a subtle mechanic that underlies the whole meta game, mm-hmm. which is eventually the players just get old and die. Intro. So, <laughs> yeah. so like they can only play some number of games. Yeah. They can so only play you... so many games and then they just don't get to play I actually think they get not even that old and then they just, they get to be to about 35 like, or something. For like <laughs> their entire rest of their life and then they die. Wait, is it they're... at all like Rogue Legacy or anything where you can at least carry some That's of that over into the next? Maybe like Monster Rancher where like when you're 
soccer player dies and you take his soul and put well, it this in is, your this other is, one. This is the hard part, though, because, power. because, you know, there's like a there's a, a period of the soccer player's life where they probably will create, you know, spawn the next generation to yeah. pass their their skills on just like in Rogue Legacy. Um, but they're so busy playing soccer because it's a 90 minute game. It takes forever. <laughs> and they, just don't, they just don't have the yeah. time to, to procreate. To yeah. And wow. so, so yeah, if they, if so they, it's not a pure genetic. Trick yeah. So, I mean, honestly, about. you know, the, the idea is pretty good behind it, but the, just the mechanics are way too limiting. Yeah. Um, it's and, too long. And it's yeah, really it's long. It's not, yeah, it's just not, it needs some, huh. it needs some updates. So I feel, I think it's still probably in early access yeah. though. So yeah, whatever. That's fair. I was thinking it'd be really cool if like one of the players could actually evolve into an NPC. Mm, and like then, a coach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That would be really cool. <laughs> and you get bonuses for your whole team. Oh, wow. That would yeah. be neat. That'd be great. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I just thought, you know, it's it just a kind of an interesting, uh, interesting new game out there. So go check it out. It's I think it's they're they're bright. It's like it's they're trying to make it into an eSport, you know, so it's on TV a little bit. <laughs> anyway. um, so you could probably find it somewhere. So. <laughs> Cool. I don't think you can get it on Steam. Actually, you probably so- can. I feel like it's <laughs> so- soccer. 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 S O C C E R. Soccer. Oh, it's not uh, spelled S O C K E R. I think. No, that's uh, very weird. In uh, like PlayStation Europe and stuff like that, they call it football. Football. Yeah. Football. 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 <laughs> there's a. In some cases, there's an umlaut. The branding is way football. confusing. Like it's got three different names. Yeah, I don't it's know. Hard to no. Oh yeah, they try to localize it. You know, for different countries, I guess. Oh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. You got to change your name. Yeah, yeah. localization is important. Yeah, it is, a, it is a global marketplace. Speaking of this, yeah. I feel like we should actually pull in a, a sport every week to discuss individual <laughs> design. Types. Are there enough sports, oh, there yeah. are sports that people know about? No. Wait, <laughs> speaking of sports, the Rio Olympics is opening. Is that this week or next week? Is uh, it soon. Are they even going to happen? I thought they, it was just. I thought the whole place was trashed with murdered bodies. It is. What? It is. And then Isn't it? someone already got mugged. One of the athletes already got mugged, like right outside there. One of the athletes was training and he felt. So he was a. What was like a wind sailor or something like that? Whatever. Wind sailor. He felt like kind of like Sailor Moon, but. <laughs> He Sailor fell. He wind. just like fell into the the water, which yeah. happens all the fucking time. And then time he came out sports. as a skeleton. I assume. No, no. He just like just <laughs> by falling acid. in there, he came out. And then all. And then after about a day, he had just this like really horrible um, oh. red thing on his leg. And then it turned out to be this just really really nasty flesh eating bacteria skin infection. What? Nice. And and so he, they got it. They got it. They basically did just like cut a hole in his leg to get <gasps> it out. Yeah. So he just he just showed a picture, and he just has like this one inch deep, one inch wide. Hole Chunk. carved out of his leg because he just <laughs> fell in the water playing a water sport. Well, they said there's some there's some report where they're like, yeah. So if you're a swimmer, if you if you imbibe more than one and a teaspoon, uh, teaspoons, yeah, don't of, get it in your mouth of the water, then you're guaranteed to get some virus. What? Like, who as a swimmer is not going to accidentally drink <laughs> literally a mouthful of water? Do they not have chlorine in the pool? I'm just so confused. Or there's, so many bad things in there that the chlorine's like, fuck it. Well, everyone's the like, you know, as far as died, the perfect nothing. moment for the sort of zombie outbreak situation or Plague Incorporated, yeah. this is it. Like, you have... All these people flying from all over the world. Yeah, and they're going to go back home after. trash right? pile. And they're oh, going to take all their diseases with them. Oh, man. That's maybe bad. Rio, maybe they're playing Plague Inc. right now. Yeah. We don't even know. It's a great game. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my mind is currently just blown. <laughs> It's it's like it's all over it's the all world, over the place. Pretty much. The thing right that, now. that strikes me about this is the question of okay, you have these people who have been training literally their entire lives to do this thing on behalf of and all these the different very countries, end, it's and then like, you have such uh, I don't even know what you call it. disrespect, I guess. Yeah, to, You're just like come do your th- your thing on this pile of trash, <laughs> on this pile of trash, literal which, pile of garbage, which mm-hmm. may. In all likelihood, end up making you not able to do that thing ever yeah, but again. But again, this is the prisoner's dilemma. Because we cut a hole in your again, leg. right? <laughs> do you, do you this is not the prisoner's. Should dilemma. I explain? How's the prisoner? Maybe dilemma? explain. So the prisoner's dilemma comes from an economics sort of like a game behavioral theory. economic, yeah, game theory it's thing. A game theory, but I'm pretty sure this is okay. Boom. So the so the prisoners. Let me let me see if I can recount this correctly. Right. So basically, you have two prisoners. Seth and I get arrested. Each of them are co-conspirators in a crime because we killed some hares and rabbits. We murdered just oh. so many. rabbits. Rabbits. Don't remind me. <laughs> so, so they put us each in into separate rooms, and they tell each of us, um, if you if you don't confess, and if your partner doesn't confess, then you're both going to get 25 years in prison. Whatever. If uh, because we have all the evidence we need, blah blah blah. Um, but if you turn your partner in, 
then you will have a like reduced sentence, but your partner will get a greater extra, right? And if you both confess, then you will both you have both get a small amount of penalty. Yeah, that's because the, the key to the prisoner dilemma is that it's in both parties' best interest to work together. Yes, and in so in this case, if they both, well, no, isn't it if it's, they if, if they both confessed, then they would each get a increased sentence. No, no, no. They, it's, it's not as bad as the, as, as, as other sentences. The key is that if one person is a tattletale and the other person isn't, then that person gets no penalty at all. Oh, right, right. They just get off free. It's like flipping on the ground in soccer. There's no penalty. Exactly. There's it. no penalty. Yeah. For it. But, <laughs> yeah. and so, so, so basically the incentive then is the, the best case scenario is that for both parties together, the best game theoretic situation where everybody wins the most possible is that they both take a small penalty by, by n- both of them confessing. Right? right. Something like that. Uh, but then there's a strong incentive for one person to be a cheat. Yeah. So think about this. So all these, so all these athletes, let's say, let's say there's just two athletes, right? And they both are at the top and the Olympics just comes down to two athletes just to simplify the problem. Well, uh, flesh eating bacteria may simplify that. Yeah. Problem well, so, us. so yeah, there, there will only be two left by the time we get there. So it's going to be true <laughs> life, but let's say then, cause each athlete knows that like if they go compete at the Olympics and if they win, then that's like their set, right? Mm -hmm. That's the peak of their sport. They're set for life. They've got all these great sponsorships. You know, they're going to be on a Wheaties box, whatever the fuck that's worth. Um, and that's kind of like Wheaties. Yeah. 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 I think just for the sake of putting Olympians on it, I don't think anybody eats it. I think it's just a yeah. brand. It's a marketing it's a billboard. Yeah. Um, huh. yeah. So the idea here is, so you're sitting here thinking, okay, so I've been training my whole life. I, and my next opportunity to do this is four years from now. And I don't know if I can, if I can make it then, right? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain my level of skill and fitness and whatever. Um, I feel like I have to, like, this is my shot. I have to go now. There's this flesh eating bacteria there, but if I don't go, somebody else is just going to come in and take my spot, mm-hmm, right? right? Like somebody else is going to come in and swoop in and take so it. You're saying the, the sort of force propelling you to go to the Olympics, even though it's probably actually in your best worst. Yeah. Interest. Because if nobody went, then they would have to just either postpone the Olympics and to a different location right. or whatever, but somebody's going to go, yep. right? It's the guy at the front row who stands up yeah. and now everybody has to stand up. And if him. somebody goes, then they get to win and then everybody else misses out, right? And yeah, of course they get flesh eating bacteria, but they also won the Olympics. <laughs> so. Hopefully before yeah. the flesh eating bacteria. Hopefully. Huh. Let's get to some questions. Okay. Enough about flesh eating bacteria. Have we covered all of our news items? Yeah. yeah. Woo. Uh, where do these questions come from? Podcast.bscotch.net. You can ask anonymously or with your Bscotch ID and get a sweet, sweet perk. Yeah. And a also sweet. a maybe semi sweet or really bitter answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe salty. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Salty. Probably. <laughs> it's fucking early in the morning. There are so many <laughs> flavors your answer could yeah. be. Yeah. I just I put salt in my coffee this morning just to be ready for these questions. Okay, so <laughs> that might be good. This actually. first question is actually a statement from an anonymous person who says, "I used to be a fan of butterscotch shenanigans, and now I'm an air conditioner." What? <laughs> Uh, what is that, Lil John? Lil, Lil John. Lil John is yeah. in the studio, buddy. Uh, <laughs> just make sure you check your filters every few months. Yeah. Um, life as an air conditioner is actually there's a lot of much more complicated than life as a fan. Yeah, you've got a hot side and a cold side yeah. constantly. Yeah, I mean, You're I've got dripping a dripping out the front. Dripping. <laughs> yeah. I've got dripping. a fan. <laughs> yeah. I've got a fan that I've had running for like three years, and it goes, doesn't give a fuck. Wait, mm-hmm. a fan or an air conditioner? A fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And my air conditioner does give a fuck. Cause it gets covered in dirt. You got to change those filters. Mm-hmm. You got to rent, you got to hose it off every now yeah. and then, you yeah. know, yeah. So it's what this complicated. person is saying is that they're now suddenly very high maintenance. Yeah. 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 And so we're going to get, to get it together. Yeah. Pay a lot of attention to them. Yeah. That's it's contributing not, to global warming. Yeah. Ugh. 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 So that's, anonymous, Adam, that's not how air conditioners work. They make things colder. You dummy, <laughs> big dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> If only they that just were true. Coldness. I think the transition from a fan to an air conditioner. Yeah, that's the part that is the confusing. Is yeah, I'm wondering how that go. You know, does that mean they're also how no longer a fan? Because there, no there are three states fan. here, right? They first existed, then they became a fan of butterscotch, and now they are an air conditioner. So what's well, are they an air the conditioner stage? of butterscotch or just a regular air conditioner? Just it's it's unimplied that they are an air conditioner of butterscotch. So mm-hmm. I must take that as that they are just a generic. Just air an air conditioner. Are they now. our air conditioner? 
No. I mean, are you sure? I haven't Maybe. gone out and checked. Have you checked our air conditioner? There might just so be a cold. guy out there. <laughs> just, he's blowing into. There might a just pipe. be a person out there just blowing into the vent. Hold he's on. just like <laughs> he's just drinking cold soda and then blowing. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> and actually, there was a moment last week where the air conditioner wasn't working very well. Maybe that was the transition Did, period when yeah. they were. Wait, here's a question: When this person was unhooking everything and then plugging their mouth into the vent, it, <laughs> we hope it's their mouth. If this, we hope. If we don't this know. transition <laughs> were. You know, Pokemon esque, right? So you start off as a fan, then lots of bright flashes, then you turn into an air conditioner. What's the third stage? House, I think house, I think one of those house, um, just a house. Yeah, one of those like industrial size meat lockers. A meat locker. Yeah. Ooh. Just a or a big blast ass freezer. Yeah. What's a blast freezer? That's the one that's just it's so fucking cold. It's like blasting cold air so you can throw oh. a boiling thing. I thought you meant like it can it. freeze oh. an explosion in place. <gasps> it can. Snow machine. A small enough explosion. A snow Ooh. machine. Yeah. Man, it'd be fucking awesome if appliances worked like Pokemon. Where at a certain <laughs> at a certain point, like your toaster, you know, once you've made enough toast, it has enough XP. Then all of a sudden, it becomes like one of those Quiznos ones. Yeah, you know? it just starts flashing. <laughs> and you're, like, you're like, do I hit B? Do I want to keep it? Uh, I don't know. It's gonna get Never some new moves. B. You know, Does ever hit B for real when it comes to Pokemon no. evolution? Who hits B? I've hit B. Carol, for what <laughs> purpose? <laughs> There's supposedly some some math behind it where if you keep uh, leveling to learn it up, moves faster. Or something, yeah, right? and or so there's moves. there's moves that they can learn before they evolve, and I think they also get a little bit more powerful before they evolve, mm. and then you can you can just level up different aspects of their their stats and things. There's that and there's that delayed gratification then because you then yeah. level them at ninety eight or ninety nine. Yeah, and then you evolve them. Do they well, have level caps? Yes. Yeah. Ninety nine. Uh, so level one hundred. Hundred. Level one hundred. Do they? Do they then? Unless you're missing, no. Do you get the chance to level them up every subsequent, or you get the chance to evolve them every subsequent level up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you got to remember that every time they level, you got to remember to hit B, or else yeah. you missed it. What's stupid though is when you hit B after you give somebody an evolution stone. Oh, and that's just a horrible. Why do they even let you do that? Just in case, in case you do an accident, because <laughs> it, consu- <laughs> it consumes the stone. Yeah, which also begs the question: where that stone goes? They literally consume the stone. Are you like, yeah, is it, you just they just, 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 you just you just kind of shove it down their strong gullet. arm it down their gullet too. Yeah, maybe they have what? Are they, maybe they have a crop. You know, yeah, like yeah. A, like pigeons. They just keep evolving stones in their yeah in their gizzard. Their gizzard. Their gizzards. Pokemon are gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question comes from Kaki Chan 2. When will the Butterscotch logo tees be in stock for sale again? That's a good question. Oh. Carol. So I think we actually Carol. discussed that the logo tees, as they just the plain old logo tees, will remain to be a studio only mm-hmm. shirt. However, we have been working on a really great new design for fans. Mm-hmm. It's already uh, done, in fact. Yes. That's and that's going to be coming out probably within the next few weeks, hopefully, if we can figure out a good yeah. solution good, for that. Good distribution mechanism. Good distribution mechanism. Mm-hmm. I'm currently in the process of researching good merch distribution outlets. Yeah, it turns out it's stupidly hard just to like find a good way to distribute things. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't. You in gotta, this day and age, you got to take the orders. Someone's got to take their creepily small hand, fold the tea, and then shove it into a small envelope. And it all has to be done with high quality. And then take that to the post office and throw it at the post office price. people. This is why 3D printing technology needs to needs to grow You up. would download a shirt. <laughs> I would. I <laughs> would download every enough. shirt. Yeah. yeah. I'd 3D print that. That fucker right onto my body. Is there a three D lay there? <laughs> lay there under the printer and just it would just slowly caress your do you think thirty six like so? hours later. Aren't Lou a- just three D printers? Yeah. 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 Yes. Well no, they're two D printers. Oh shit. No, it's three dimensional. Uh, barely. <laughs> It's three. It's two dimensional and then wrapped around and. <laughs> well, I guess the way, the way I'd say is it doesn't go up, right? It doesn't add any or subtract any z value as it goes. Correct. But so there it is z value in the threads. Right. There is, but but but, <laughs> but. Z-value in can we just say but, but again? <laughs> but but but. Actually, <laughs> that leads us to our next question. <laughs> Is it about butts? Yeah. I'm thrilled. Says, Butterscotch shenanigans is quite a mouthful. This is from Alan MB. Are, are we sure this isn't Carol that put this question in here? It's possible. <laughs> it's too convenient. This is my idea. This No, it's not actually. He just says, can we condense it to butt shenanigans? That yep. may get even more comments than the current t-shirt. 
So I actually had a, a great idea, and I still think we should do it, which is we should update our splash screen on our games so that you can tap the letters to explode them individually. Oh. Uh, which means if you then, wanted it to be butt shenanigans, you could. You could do that. Just explode the rest of the word on the splash screen. Yeah. If you do I like it fast it. enough, I, I assume. Yeah. Or will it will it then add a cool down every time you tap so you can keep on blowing things? No, up? if you just I mean the splash screen's only up for a second, right? So you gotta you, you gotta, gotta be fast. You gotta be we fast. Should, we should add a we should add a hidden perk for, for spelling up. different words. <laughs> yeah, for spelling different words. <laughs> That's but, a really good idea. But yeah. non. We could have a butt perk. <laughs> Scotch dams. <laughs> the splash the splash butt <laughs> perk. Uh, that'd be fun. I'm down. Yeah. I yeah, think we've great. yeah, we've uh we had some very good reasons for keeping the name so long early on, which is that we wanted nobody to be able to contact us or to be fans of us, which was a poor, poor choice. Yeah. Up front, we were like, we want mm-hmm. to make, make, make sure so nobody could properly so type in our website name mm-hmm. so they couldn't find our website. The and Google my, search results are hilarious when you look at how people get to our website yeah. because yeah. the ways that they the have spellings spelled. are incredible. Yeah. But they still made it. I still got there. But if it was just butt shenanigans, I feel like people would be much more focused. I feel like maybe the shenanigans <laughs> the shenanigans focused. might be the hard part. I think it is. <laughs> yeah. I'm currently uh, formulating emoji ways to, to reflect butt shenanigans. So there's mm. the peach, and then maybe the mm. little little confetti thing, and then a little explosion. <laughs> And then the little two, the two girls in the bunny costumes dancing. (laughs) (laughs) But, but, (laughs) but shenanigans sounds like some kind of adult video series that (laughs) we definitely, we shouldn't do. It probably exists and then we're going to end up in a trademark battle. We're going to be in a trademark (laughs) battle. Okay. So no butt shenanigans. No butt shenanigans. shenanigans. (laughs) Uh, Next question comes from Alan Falcon. Who asks, so we can, can we expect a 14-foot-tall, 4,000-pound brown statue of Hugo Duco in Taiwan to celebrate B. Scotch's 25th anniversary? So the, this is the reference really here, specific. Yeah, well, the reference is, is Blizzard. Is uh, their 25th did just this with, uh, I don't know if it was Lord Arthas or who was, but... Probably Arthas. Some of the, one of their big characters. Yeah. Who's now literally a huge character, 4,000-pound uh, statue in Taiwan. Yeah, let's do it. Just, uh, if we could just write that down so that in put it in the calendar. Twenty one years. We should, we should, we get, a, <laughs> we should get a small jar, a swearing jar, mm-hmm. and every time that's our Hugo statue cursing you. Dude, that jar would fill up. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> we'll have yeah. enough money tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, well, we won't have any money left, but the jar. The will jar have will have a pretty good amount. <laughs> yeah, the jar will actually have enough money to purchase its own sentience. Yeah, yeah, and the jar will take over butt shenanigans, and the mm-hmm. jar will kill us all. And the jar will rule the world. And you'll be the one who welcomed this demon into our midst, Alan How Falcon. The jar could demon. you? <laughs> also, I saw, brief aside, it's not so much of an aside, someone put up a Pikachu statue. Oh, yeah, I saw that. In New Orleans. What? Illegally. <laughs> Illegally? <laughs> Which blows, I didn't know you, I, I guess it's you a have to get like, a permit to put it in a statue. Wait, you down, can't just, wait, you is can't it just like, put a six-ton artwork like, in the middle of a yeah, public it's a, park. It's a park. Well, then it's obviously illegal. You can't, yeah, you they, can't just, just they just put it, but I mean, then the, the, the you know, jurisdiction's forced to then this interesting question, which is like, who's not going to like a huge Pikachu statue, A? Nintendo, probably. They're probably going to get sued. But nobody knows who nobody put it knows there. Who's Somebody just put it there. Because now because it's on the city's it property. Exists, yeah. The city has yeah. to remove it's it. Now the city's but actually, this is apparently how the bull on Wall Street got there. Someone just put it Someone there? Someone just put it there. Oh, really? <laughs> as a... Uh, like kind of as a as like I guess satirical piece or something, because mm. uh, it has like these huge balls and stuff, <laughs> and uh, and everybody was like, oh yeah, this is cool, and okay. then they just kind of <laughs> everybody liked it and they just left it there. Nice. So maybe this Pikachu statue will get I, to. I hope it does. I want there to be more gorilla statue building. You know, like people just running around statues of gorillas. Around. Well, that'd be cool. There's gorilla, 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 gorilla statue building. Yeah. Wait, oh, no, because because that's the official name of gorillas. Is gorilla, gorilla. So it's gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Yeah. A gorilla, gorilla, a gorilla. It's just gorillas all the way gorilla, down. Gorilla, yeah, gorilla. It's gorilla. Yeah, it's gorilla, gorilla. It's like boobs, boobs. It's, what? Yes, the boobs, boobs is a tiny fish. <laughs> its scientific is, name is boobs, boobs, which is my favorite named creature. <laughs> anywhere. That's so good. Yeah, it's great. So horrible. If you've never heard of the boobs, boobs, you should Google it. It's building. It is unfortunately a very generic looking fish. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. what a child would draw. If, yeah, if, you, if you're just like, I'm just going to draw just a fish, you probably drew a boobs boob. <laughs> you didn't even know. Uh, but they're little, so at least they're cute. Yeah. In so. the way that fish can be. All right, so we, I think we got time for cute. one more question. All right, this one comes from Gandvin, or perhaps Gandwin. Gandwin. Who asks, I for one support our lizard overlords. What are your opinions? This, you know, this comes up on the internet a lot. The lizard overlords? People are always talking about supporting overlords. 
and then submitting opinions about other people about these overlords. There's cat overlords. There's lizard overlords. There's robot overlords coming. Robot overlords. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I Which guess Which overlords do you choose? In in the case of lizard overlords, you know, what are some specific well, what are the per- issues what are the perks and perks? And, yeah, yeah. What, what yeah, what are the different advantages of the different sort of species of overlord, mm. you know? True. Like if you've got a lizard overlord, is that is that going to be different from having robot overlords? Right. At least lizards are biological creatures and they will care maybe a little bit about climate change. Maybe. Mm, that's but they're true. also but they like hot weather. Yeah. yeah. They're cold blooded yeah, and they're like, fuck yeah, it's hot. Mm. And they just lay there <laughs> but, I mean, motionless for but hours. Global warming isn't just about stuff getting hotter, it's also about stuff getting colder, right? It's about stuff getting that's true. S- just stuff just going crazy. Yeah. yeah, but but the net average is, is hotter goes than up. warmer. Fact. That's true. Yeah. That so so you're thinking the lizards would actually try to push Global warming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's also the question, like, so robots, you know, they're going to, they're going to require a lot of power, yeah. right? So they're going to be, they're going to be sort of ravaging the land much more so than we are. Just kidding. Probably less actually, but, uh, <laughs> but lizards, they eat like a, a mouse once every six weeks or something. Yeah. yeah. It's true. So they might eat us if they get big enough. They, well, they, they but, very slowly. Weeks, I mean, but the question yeah. is, yeah. If, <laughs> if the lizards were our overlords, would they be sympathetic to the fact that we basically just inhale, you know, 5% of our body weight and food every day? Or would they be like, God, these fucking humans are really high maintenance. We should just mm. eat them all. Eat them. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time seeing any benefit from lizard overlords, to be yeah, perfectly I'm honest. Not, Do you think they'd come to view us as pests? They'd be like, oh, the dang humans are in my yard again. You know? Those <laughs> gross Squishy fuzzies. <laughs> what do you think? Like Squishy we're, fuzzies. Because we're like, we're building fields everywhere. We're doing all this yeah. ridiculous stuff. We're just ants. Really big ants. Yeah. yeah. The lizards, they just want to eat a mouse and just chill the fuck out sleep. for six weeks. Yeah. And sleep in the sun. Maybe change colors if they can. Yeah, yeah I kind of like just them. Or just weirdly crawl out of their own skin every now and then. Ah, oh, that sounds <laughs> great. It's just a hobby they have. Well, one thing I would do, though, is, good life, is uh, you know, like replacing Ding Dong Ditch, is that you find a lizard. Ding Dong Ditch. It took, me, it took me a while to parse that. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing that happened. You find a lizard who is who has eaten recently, so they're you know lethargic. And usually at nighttime, because it's colder, so they can't move as fast. And then because most of their tails detach. Mm-hmm. Right? So all you do is go grab its tail and then have someone startle it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then you so just it's like cow tipping sort of. Yeah, but then you just steal its tail because it snaps off, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think given how, how much jerks humans are to things, that would totally they're happen. definitely gonna eat all of us. Because cow tipping is a perfect example of this. Like cows are like cows sleep standing up and humans think it's hysterical. It's not even true. I thought that wasn't actually true. It is true. Apparently. I'm going to Google it right this, now. This lizard detailing ever, thing would be... Lizard detailing. It would be <laughs> the start of the rebellion. Put like a b- decals on your lizard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also ripping their tails off. Yeah, uh, it would be the start of the revolution. That would probably be. invent some sort of armor with spikes around their tails. Yeah. Well, it would be a sign of it would be a sign of prestige in lizard culture that a human hasn't pulled your tail off recently, mm, right? So, recently. That's yeah. Fair. <laughs> So President. all of the all the higher ups, all of the, the the super rich, you know, upper, the one percent, up, the one percent lizards would have. There's these long ass, luscious, flowing tails. But you know, some of them are prosthetic. You know, some of them are fake. Oh, yeah. some of them are fake. They have implants. Most of them are fake. Yeah, because <laughs> we humans we're devious. We're ripping off tails day in day out. You can't stop us. <laughs> maybe, but here, maybe lizard tails don't actually come off. Maybe, maybe like cows standing up when they sleep, it's just a myth. Which is a myth, by the way. You just busted that. I did, according to Modern Farmer. If anybody knows oh, shit, well, then yeah, how cows. do you tip over a cow? Cow tipping isn't actually a thing people do. It is a thing people do. I no. know people who have done it. Maybe they. I mean, went I know with the attempt with the exactly. intention to do it. I've heard then, that story on numerous occasions. Was someone like sprinted into a cow? Yeah, where someone was like, "I'm gonna go do some cow tipping." And then they like go off and they do their little adventure. Uh, and uh, But then do they actually tip the cows? Does that even happen? Well, then then they come back and they're like, we can't tell everybody that we went cow tipping and then learned that cows just lay down when they sleep and then went home because that's yeah. a shitty story. Or right? that they yeah. ran into a standing cow and it just hurt their shoulder because it weighs 700 pounds yeah. and yeah. has four legs instead of two. And as a 90-pound 13-year-old, <laughs> you can't... Yeah, I mean, you can't push one over. That's the thing. It's like, how do you, why do you think you could even push a cow over? Yeah. So, anyway, cow tipping, probably not real. Lizard detailing, maybe. Definitely. We don't know. Sign yes. me up for that. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We had to do a shorter one. 
today because we are pre-recording before before we start everything. So, mm-hmm. and the dog got out of dog jail. The dog escaped dog jail, and now she's rampaging through the house, <laughs> snugg- it's madness snuggling here. everyone to death. So, look out for the uh, release of Crashlands on Gog, and keep up with the lore on uh, the website, Tuesdays? the new website, bscotch.net. And uh, if you want to submit some questions for next week, podcast.bscotch.net is your place to go. And otherwise, keep in touch with us on the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Instagrams. We are all over the place now. And as one final note, something that we've never really done. Uh, if you like this podcast, please tell people about oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe leave a review. Uh, do something. some word of mouth. Leave a review. You know, get a get a podcast uh, app on your phone or whatever and subscribe to it and tell everybody, everybody else you know to do the same if you think they would like it. We're Maybe. on iTunes. We're on SoundCloud. We're on some other stuff. Google Play. Google Play. Mm-hmm. Yep. So subscribe. Give us reviews. Tell everybody. We'd appreciate it. It would help us out a lot. Yeah. All right. Cool. Bye. Okay. okay bye. Bye. bye.